Good Thursday afternoon. It is August the 1st and as we head into a period of climatologically more active tropical weather, August and September heading towards the peak of the season. We do have several systems to talk about two out in the Pacific, Eric and Flossie and growing potential in the Atlantic Basin to see our third name storm of the season within the next seven to nine days. Overall, looking at August since 1970, I went back and queried any storm that developed that got to at least category one strength within the month of August since 1970 found 90 of those storms. So it's a very active time frame, very active month. In fact, 27% of all named storms happen in August, even more so in September. The peak of the season is right around September 10th to September 11th. So it's only going to get more active from here on out. Even October, pretty active too, 17%. So as we look at August, where are the areas that we typically see some development? Well, of course, the Gulf of Mexico is always open for business. Very warm waters there and also the Caribbean. We see development in this area and then it typically spreads into the Gulf of Mexico and kind of seeds the area there. And this time of the year, we also look at the main development region as well. That starts to get a little more active and spread systems off towards the west, possibly into the southwestern parts of the Atlantic or even into the Caribbean and eventually the Gulf of Mexico too. So when we look back at climatology from the National Hurricane Center, starting with the satellite area in 19, satellite era in 1966 all the way up to 2009, we typically see our third named storm of the year around August 13th. So we're about two weeks ahead of time or so. We could possibly be seeing this before that time frame, and that would be Chantal. If we were to look at our second hurricane, that comes in around August 28th. We've already had one this year, and that was Barry that topped out at a Category 1 hurricane, again, 1966 to 2009. A look at the Pacific Basin quickly. I'll touch on this, and then we'll go over to the Atlantic. We still have Eric and Flossie. Eric is just a shell of what it was. It topped out at a Category 4 major hurricane. Now it's down to a Category 1 with winds at 85 miles per hour. There's the big island of Hawaii. It is expected to pass to the south, but certainly going to be bringing with it some pretty big waves, especially to the southern coastlines there. A weakening process continues down to a tropical storm later today and then a remnant low. It's really getting battered with wind shear right now and a little bit of some drier air. Here's a look at that wave forecast. 20, 25 foot swells are working their way on the southern parts of the big island there before things start to kind of wind down and push to the west. Flossie right behind it has been struggling. Same sort of issues, wind shear and dry air. It's now a high grade tropical storm with winds of 65 miles per hour moving to the west northwest at 16 expected to remain a tropical storm as this one looks to pass just to the north of the Hawaiian Islands. So we had Eric to the south, Flossie likely to the north, bringing some rain showers and maybe some big swells there as well. All right, over to the Atlantic Basin now. You'll be hearing a lot about Invest 96L. What does that even mean? Well, Invest stands for Investigative Area. 96, it goes from numbers 90 to 99, just to slap a number on it. Then once you hit 99, you go back to 90. And the L means that it is out in the Atlantic Basin. If it was out in the Pacific, it'd have an E on the end of it. So 20% chance of Invest 96L showing development within the next 48 hours. That's up from yesterday. That was at 0%. And we also seen an increase within the next five days. Now high likelihood, 70% chance that this cluster of showers and thunderstorms right now, as it heads west, will develop into our next name system. But again, 70% chance, there's still a 30% chance that nothing at all happens with this. So you have to watch it carefully. There are a lot of players in this game that can change the outcome as we get farther out in time. So it really bears watching. Overall, the environment in the Atlantic is very hostile to tropical development, dry air, is not good. We need moist air. We're finding a little bit of it with some tropical waves off to the south. And here's that one we're watching 96 L right now. Doesn't look like much. You can see the overall spin in the atmosphere here. We saw a nocturnal burst of some convection, some thunderstorm activity. That's typical with tropical systems. But when we peel away the satellite presentation and we look at exactly what's going on in terms of the atmosphere itself, we look at the spin the atmospheric spin or vorticity. And you're seeing that here with the red and yellow shading. It's an elongated signature for this to kind of combine itself or get a little bit more consolidated 
we would see that kind of show some development there. But it does have good bones here. So we're going to watch that as it moves off towards the west in the next couple of days. See if that consolidates, looks a little more circular, and that would give us a better signature of a developing tropical system. So what do the models think on this? Again, you got to take this with a grain of salt because until we get a closed center of circulation, it's a little bit harder for the models to pick up on things. But right now, a general consensus is off towards the west, eventually towards the greater and lesser Antilles by early next week. And it's not the only game in town. There are five other tropical waves coming off the continent of Africa. These will seed the Atlantic and moisten up the atmosphere there. So each one of these has a chance at becoming a tropical system. So we're going to watch it carefully. We're heating up. It's August now. And as we get into September too, more of this action will get started. If you have any questions, you can find me on social media always. Facebook, meteorologist Tim Pandagis or on Twitter at 13 Tim Pandagis.